In this video, Dr. Rob Plummer and I are going to talk about five traps that people fall into after finishing beginning Greek that prevent them from going on. Let's get into it. The heart of this video is there are really a number of traps that people fall into after they've finished beginning Greek. Now, we did a video a little while ago, Dr. Plummer, myself, and Dr. Sam Lamison. We worked together to put together a, a video about why students quit Greek. This video is kind of like a part two for that previous one. So if you're interested in that first video, there's a link up here for it, and you can take a look at that in a moment. This video was all about what are the five traps that people fall into after beginning Greek that prevent them from developing their Greek, and when they don't develop their Greek, they often will lose their Greek. Okay, so that's the key of this video. These five traps are the things we're going to be focusing on, and more importantly, and more practically, how you can avoid falling into those five traps. So let's get into it with the first thing that holds people back from continuing to develop their knowledge of the language. Here's the first of five. The first thing that holds people back from developing their knowledge of Biblical Greek is bad models. Jim Rohn, who was a marketing guy, and I don't agree with everything Jim Rohn says, but this is just a really good quote that rings true, and I've used it in previous videos so you may have heard me say this before, but he said that we become like the five people we spend the most time with. We become like the five people we spend the most time with. Let's hear what Dr. Plummer says about this exact thing. Another reason that students fail to continue on in Greek is they have bad models. Now, in saying this, I'm not judging other people for not having had good Greek instruction or not being faithful to it. I'm just saying, like, we become like the community we surround ourselves with. And if we have bad models for uh, discipline and keeping in the biblical languages, we think that's normal, and we think it's normal to just leave them behind or not use them or use them haphazardly. And, and that's very unfortunate. So what Dr. Plummer is getting at is that you're going to be pulled along by the people you surround yourself with. And if the people you surround yourself with don't care about Greek, don't care for Greek, and think it's even a worthless enterprise, that's not going to motivate you to keep working. So it's really important that you keep working to motivate yourself and stay with people who are engaged with the language. This is why you want to surround yourself with good people and particularly you want to go and find some communities that are going to be helpful to draw you along with them. And in fact, here's what I encourage. You don't just want to find those communities, you want to spend time in them. In fact, the more time you spend inside a community, the more influence that community will have on you. So you want to select a community that's going to be really helpful to ensuring that you are making continuous progress toward that goal of reading Biblical Greek. And that's where this video, and in fact this whole channel, comes in handy. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't already done so, hit the like button and the subscribe button as well. And that way, when new videos are released, you find out about them. And that continues to motivate you. If you hit the like button, that helps other people find this video, and you encourage them as well. So go ahead and do that, and not only be motivated, but also motivate other people to learn Biblical Greek as well. I also want to encourage you to go and join an online community. Now, there are plenty of good communities online, and I want to encourage you to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know a community that you've found really helpful online. Leave a, a comment in the comment section below, even with a link to it, perhaps. So that's the first reason people don't develop their Greek, is that they are surrounded by people who aren't motivated to learn Greek, and these bad models keep them from learning Greek. So surround yourself with good models, with people who are learning Greek, and immerse yourself in that community so that you're encouraged to keep going. The second reason that people stop learning Greek is that they have access to such good tools now, and those tools make it easy to cheat. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? We live in an unprecedented age where we have so many tools available to us and those tools can make it too easy in many cases. And so rather than doing the hard work of learning the language properly, we become dependent on the tools. In fact, we don't know the text as well as we know the tools. It's really quite amazing. And, and the thing is that whenever we're using the tools without being in the text, we're always 
going to leave something on the table. Now, there's a couple of ways this comes out. One is that, uh, and I've seen this with pastors, they will spend a whole lot of time working on a minor point or even a sub point of a sub point in the Greek text and make it into a major point in their sermon. This is a critical error that comes from really not being able to follow the language in the original text. They're just sort of word studying or picking their way through things. And because they don't know the structure of the text naturally, they end up making something that is small a molehill into a mountain. This is a critical mistake and it's simple to avoid if you just know the text. And if all you're doing is working with the tools, then you're going to be leaving something behind. And often, unfortunately, the thing you're leaving behind is the main point of the text. And so don't fall into that category. Don't fall into that error. Don't let the tools drag you away from the text. This is probably a good time for me to mention that this video is sponsored by Logos Bible Software. Logos Bible Software actually hires people who know the language of the New Testament and the Old Testament for that matter. And then they build the tool based on the knowledge of the text. And so they're building the tool so that you come to the tool from the text first. And so even though these tools are wonderful, even the creators of Logos Bible Software know that you need to know the text to be able to properly use the tools. And so if you're interested in getting a copy of Logos Bible Software, I want to encourage you to do so by going to mntg.me slash Logos. And if you go there, not only do you get 25% off uh, the foundation package of Logos Bible Software, you also get an extra free book in addition to the ones they give you by default. So don't get into the trap of using the tools without knowledge of the text. Make sure you spend a lot of time developing your knowledge of the text, learning the vocabulary, for example. You can do that by just getting the student edition of Master New Testament Greek uh, from mntg.me slash student, uh, or just doing all that you can to get out of the tools so that you're free of tools and you're in the text. That's the way to avoid being stuck in this trap of being of just cheating with the tools, okay? So don't let the tools cheat you out of a la the knowledge of the language. The third reason that people prevent growing in biblical Greek is really they get to the end of beginning Greek and they think, well, I've, I know Greek now. The hard work is done and I can, can kind of relax a little bit. And so what happens is they no longer put in the time that was needed to get through beginning Greek. Now, the challenge with this is that when you finish beginning Greek, really, even though you've finished the hardest part, you've not yet completed the journey. It's a little bit like in The Lord of the Rings, when Frodo and the other hobbits are leaving the Shire, and they encounter the Black Riders for the first time. Leaving the Shire becomes a mission, a really difficult element. It's a really hard thing to do, is to get out of the Shire alive. But they do it, but when they've done it, they haven't yet finished the journey. They've really gotten through that difficult piece, but the rest of the journey is still ahead of them. There are still so many more things to learn, so many more things to do, and so many more challenges to overcome. And so it is with biblical Greek. Just because you finished beginning Greek doesn't mean you've finished. And that's the key thing. That means that you're going to need to prioritize to keep moving on. Let's hear what Dr. Rob Plummer says about this very thing. Another reason that students... Uh, do not continue in Greek beyond one or two semesters is the tyranny of the urgent. The tyranny of the urgent. When I was in college, I was involved with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at Duke University. I'm so grateful for that ministry, for Steve Hinkle, for the wonderful staff worker who was there. Just a really solid, solid biblical group uh, when I was there. I'm so grateful for it. And they had these little pamphlets, you know, little booklets, and one of them that you could buy or read, uh, it was called The Tyranny of the Urgent. I don't think I ever actually read it, <laughs> probably because of the tyranny of the urgent in my life. But the title was all that I needed. And the title was telling me, you're just, uh, uh, you know, reacting to whatever is urgently before you, like it's a tyrannical force demanding your attention, rather than being planned and deliberate and thoughtful in what you do. And here's the thing that Rob Plummer is trying to encourage you and I to do here is that we want to be driven by the priorities that we set for ourselves before God, right? God calls you and I to do certain things. And one of those things is to know him and know his word. And learning Greek is a key part of that. And so your priorities and my priorities needs to be set based on that. And if we don't set our priorities ourselves, then our circumstances and other people are going to set those priorities for us. And that's not a good thing. So here's what I encourage you to do here. 
I want you to, I want to encourage you to write down a goal or two goals, just one goal really. And writing down is really important because if you write down your goal, just the act of writing it down makes it about 40% more likely you'll actually achieve it. But of course, you can then take that written post-it note or whatever, put it on your wall, put it where you'll see it, and make it something you're looking at regularly to remind you of that goal. Once you've written that goal down, then you can work backwards from there. Make sure that goal has both a clear outcome, something like, you know, I'm going to refresh my Greek in three months so that I finish a beginning Greek grammar, or it could be that I've read, I want to read seven books of the New Testament in September 2021, uh, or whenever it happens to be. So be clear on what the goal is, make it measurable and also make it time bound so there's a certain date on it and then work backwards for that and develop habits on a day-by-day basis to make sure that you're able to do that and I recommend getting up a little earlier every day or, or going to bed a little later and getting up a little later the next day so that you end up doing it sometime every single day prioritize that time to make sure it works so I encourage you to take a little bit of time every day. And not only that, but I also want to say, to use your devotional time for reading Greek as well. If you're reading Greek as part of your devotional time, yeah, it's going to make it slower, but it's also going to make you think more deeply about the text as you read it as well. There's benefits just in that from a devotional perspective, right? So do that. So the third trap that people fall into that prevents them from developing their Greek is they don't prioritize their time. Prioritize your time. Put a little bit of time aside every single day and work backwards from a clear goal that you write down so that you're able to make growing in Greek something that's a high priority and something you do every day. And if you don't prioritize your time for yourself, circumstances and other people will do it for you. Another reason that people don't continue to develop their Greek is they're just not aware of the resources available to them. Listen to what Dr. Plummer says on this one as well. Another reason that people depart too quickly from Greek is just because they're they're not aware of the resources and the coaching that can help them, right? Um, I mean, you know, we have a wonderful gym here on campus. I mean, it's really amazing with a pool and weight room. And I'm always surprised by how few people uh, actually use it. And, and, but, but some of the people who are there are there with a personal trainer. They've hired another student who has a background in that. And the reason is they know they wouldn't go without the help. They need that. It's all right to admit, I need some help, right? Uh, I, in, a, in the United States to uh, get into a good college. Many times you have to have a high score in the ACT or SAT. And one of the criticisms of that system is they say, well, all these wealthy families, the reason their kids do so well, is they spend thousands of dollars on private coaching to do that, right? Why do they do that? It's because their kids wouldn't study without paying for the coaching and tutoring in the way they would otherwise. It, we, it's most of us need encouragement, need help, and there, there's never been more help. There's never been more free resources like the Daily Dose of Greek. I've, I've poured a lot of my life into the Daily Dose of Greek the last five years to try to help people. Daily Dose of Hebrew, Daily Dose of Greek. We also have those in Spanish. Uh, Spanish version of the Daily Dose of Greek and the Daily Dose of Hebrew. The Daily Dose of Latin. We're trying to provide these this daily accountability and little help to help people along. Uh, Daryl through the ministry, Master New Testament Greek. What a wonderful, what a wonderful idea. Here's someone saying, I can come in and coach you. I can help. I can provide that personal training that you need to help you do what you really want to do. Again, I want to, I want to recommend to you a couple of books I've helped co-author: uh, Greek for Life and Hebrew for Life. Um, those books provide all kinds of advice about. Uh, habits and about methods and resources. I mean, again, it's overwhelming. Every day almost I hear about new resources, new uh, video coaching methods, new uh, print volumes, new programs, new conferences. I mean, it's, it, it's an embarrassing wealth of opportunity to learn Greek and Hebrew. Let's admit probably the greatest challenge to learning Greek and Hebrew is uh, distractions, whether it's Netflix or Amazon Prime videos or sporting events. Uh, it, it, is, it, that, that's probably the greatest, dis, greatest challenge for most people, is not their intellectual ability, not even the time they have, but is how they spend their time. And, and, and there's often a need for some help, whether it's, it's through, 
through a, a volume like Hebrew for Life or Greek for Life, giving you real specific guidance and plans, or whether it's through a coach like Daryl, a Master New Testament Greek, or whether it's through a program you enroll in, right? That's, again, one of the great reasons to go to seminary, to physical seminary, is to put yourself in that in that environment where you're lifted up with the tide, right? Lifted up. Come to Southern Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm just give a little advertisement. I, I want a journey into the Greek New Testament with you. I hope we can do that. Now, one of the things Dr. Plummer mentioned in that piece of the video was that the biggest problem that we have is distractions. Note that he didn't say the biggest problem is the lack of intelligence, the difficulty memorizing things, or any of those kinds of things, is distractions. There are so many distractions that draw us away from the New Testament. Now that means that we have to prioritize and structure our lives so that those distractions fall away. So the four things that stops people from developing their Greek is they're not aware of and not investing in good resources. And the way to fix that is simply to invest time, money, and attention into the right materials so that you can continue to grow your Greek. The fifth reason is competing desires. Do you believe that Greek is actually valuable to help you grow in Christ-likeness and help you grow in your knowledge of the Word of God? If the answer is yes, then that should really drive you to want to do Greek more often. But then it's not always that simple, is it? Listen to what Dr. Plummer says on this. Another reason that people don't continue with their Greek and Hebrew is they love other things more, right? They love other things more. Uh, James A.K. Smith wrote a book that got a lot of attention a few years ago entitled, You Are What You Love, right? You Are What You Love. I've read snippets of the book. I haven't read the whole thing. I think my wife read the whole thing. I've seen it at her house at least. <laughs> I think she read it. He's drawing upon the work of Augustine. And it's true, isn't it, that really what we do is a biblical idea as, as well, isn't it? Not just Augustinian. What we do usually reveals what we really value. <laughs> we can say, I want to read the Greek New Testament. I want to know God's Word in the original Greek. But if we spend two hours a day on social media, perhaps that's revealing instead that we're very concerned about what's going on in other people's lives and how we're perceived, right? What, what we do really reveals what we love. And perhaps people not continuing with Greek and Hebrew is a revelation of a flawed value system, ultimately. Maybe an unexamined flawed value system, but a flawed system that is valuing other things above mining down deep into the treasures of God's Word. Dr. Plummer mentioned in that clip the book by James K.A. Smith, You Are What You Love. And I'll leave a link to that book in the description below so you can go find a copy of that book as well. The writings of James Smith are actually really interesting and I recommend them to you. Uh, I don't always agree with everything he says, but they're certainly thought-provoking. The thing is that our beliefs drive our values. Our values then drive our feelings and our affections and our loves and those loves and those affections then drive what we do, right? And so if we aren't investing the time in Greek, it may be because we have lots of other things that we value. And one of the things I want to challenge you with in this is that if you really say you value the Word of God and you value the language that it was written in, then does your living, the way you live, reflect the affections that are there. This is not to say that in every person at all times it's always going to be consistent. We're not. The thing is, if left to our own devices, our, our desires and our affections drift from godliness to disorder and sin. Right? That's just the natural way that the brokenness of our hearts, that the corruption that is part of us because of sin works in us. It naturally draws us away from the Lord. And so we have to be careful and deliberate to cultivate godly desires. And so to do this, particularly when it comes to cultivating our affections and the desires around the Word of God, is to regularly read 
texts in the scriptures that talk about the value of scripture. Psalm 19, Psalm 119. Uh, read about wisdom and the value of wisdom in the Proverbs. Uh, go and memorize verses like 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, and Hebrews chapter 12, 4, verse, uh, verse 12, or some of the passages in John 14 through 17, for instance. Memorize those and meditate on them and let them Focus your uh, desires, your thinking, and then mold your desires so that they reflect the same desires that God would have of you as well. It may not be that we don't love the scriptures, or it may be that we've just failed to prioritize and cultivate a heart for the word of God. And instead, we have all these competing desires that just rise up and choke out that desire for scripture. So, don't let these competing desires draw you away from learning biblical Greek and mastering the language. Be driven by your desire for the Word of God by cultivating a heart that loves the Scriptures and a heart that loves the language it was originally written in. So let me ask you this as we close up this video. What resources or communities have you come across on the internet that have been most helpful to you in driving your love and motivating you to develop your Greek further. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'd love to hear from you there as well. And if you're interested in taking up some of the opportunities, joining the Master New Testament Greek community, learning how Master New Testament Greek can be helpful to you, go to mntg.me slash roadmap, download your roadmap for mastery so that you learn uh, how this whole program is structured and what's in it for you as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. This video and this channel would not exist without your support so thank you for liking it for subscribing and i look forward to seeing you in the next video until then keep making small consistent steps toward mastering i'll see you in the next video see you then